Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Today I'm going to do my late September book reviews video. I have a feeling this is going to be a long old video because I've got a lot to chat about. So I read three books in September. I'm currently reading one book on the channel and I want to talk about October's book club pick for my book club that I run on the channel. So I will go into September's book club pick, nice little transition there. For September I chose Dracula by Bram Stoker. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. I feel like I've spoken about it non-stop. I did a video for my Patreons talking about it. I've spoken about it in reading blogs. I did two kind of film art things, one called Lucy, one called Children of the Night, where I was kind of acting, being the drama queen that I am. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the drama queen that wears my crown. I've spoken about it so much that I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but it is of course going to get its own video where I read out your reviews and I have a discussion with you about what I think about this book. So we're finally going to put this book down for a minute, but I finished Dracula. I finished it really at the beginning of this month, October. It took me a really long time and I started it the 1st of September, but it took me a really long time to get through that book. I then read a psychological thriller. This is Disturbance by Marion Kavanagh. This came out this year. It was sent to me by the publishers Hodder and Stoughton. I hate this cover. Let me just say that now. This cover, type down below, what do you think this book is? What do you think it is? A horror. Doesn't it look like a horror? It's not a horror at all. It's a psychological thriller. It's a really intelligent book, but it just doesn't look like that with the slanted writing, with the picture of a house. Ooh, horrible cover. But it's about a woman who she's middle-aged. Her name's Sarah, Sarah, and she's got this lovely life. She lives in this big house with her husband and her two sons, but her husband is a beast and he hurts his back and he just becomes really awful to her, really snappy, really belittles her and that's the beginning of the book is they're telling about the relationship. She's isolated by him, she's had to give up her job to look after him because he's got a bad back and he's saying like I'm the breadwinner, I'm the one that brings her the money so you should look after me and he's just really horrible and abusive towards her. Then a girl called Katie moves in to the local village and Sarah doesn't really know anything about the villagers, she hasn't got involved in the community at all, she's very isolated from everyone. But Katie is a dog walker and so she knows everyone because she walks all their dogs. And she knocks on Sarah's door and she says, hi, do you want me to walk your dog for you? Your dog's going mad in your back garden. Do you want me to walk him? And she says, yeah, sure. And then it's really about Katie, who she's 18 years old, and Sarah, this middle-aged woman. It's really about their friendship. And Katie sees how Sarah's husband, Mike, is really abusive towards her. Sarah's son is like, you need to get rid of dad. He's absolutely awful to you. Like, are you going to let him treat you like that? And it's all how kind of domestic violence, how... It it doesn't just affect the person who the person's directing their anger at, it affects the whole house. And I thought this was done so well at the beginning of the book, when every time Mike would fly into one of his rages, everyone would feel it and it'd be a ripple effect through everyone. And then it starts to affect Katie, the dog walker, because she's coming into the house and he's screaming and shouting and her kind of demeanor, demeanor's crumbling. I really loved a bit where Sarah opened the door to Katie and then Mike started like screaming in rage upstairs. And then she said, I could see on Katie's face her like crumpling. And that's when Sarah kind of realized, oh, okay, this is really bad. Like I've learned to tolerate him being abusive towards me. But when you see it on someone else's face, how shocked they are, how scared they are, then you realise, okay, yeah, this isn't right, I've allowed this to happen and my like self-esteem is so low, I've allowed this to go on that I don't realise how bad it is anymore. I thought that was done so well and then someone dies. <laughs> And then it's kind of like a mystery as to what happened to that person. Was it an accidental death? Was it a murder? What happened? It's really about Sarah's um, kind of reaching out to people in the village and trying to make friends through Katie. And then a relative comes who she hasn't seen in a long time, comes at the death. And it's all a big, it's all a big mess that has to be untangled. It doesn't really get untangled to the last few pages at the end, but there are little signs of different stuff. This is a book that once you know the ending, you want to reread it because you have that ending in mind that you want to find out oh what were all the little clues that I missed I thought this was a really good book I really enjoyed it and I'm not someone who reads a lot of thrillers but it kept me gripped from the first page to the last page I just needed to know what was going on I actually tabbed a moment within it as well oh yeah this very much sums up 
Sarah's state of mind and it's sometimes it felt as if she dived down to the bottom of the pool and the waters had closed over her head causing her to disappear without trace. That's her at the beginning kind of feeling very insignificant in her life, in her marriage, in her as a mother because she's being belittled by her husband all the time in front of their children. Her children don't respect her and it's about that the ripple effect through everyone but also with a really good murder mystery like wrapped into that as well. I thought it was really a really interesting book. I really did enjoy this. I then read another book which I adored and this is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. I got this from a charity shop and I held it up in like a what I want to read kind of video and all the comments were like oh my god you're gonna love this book you need to read it and I wasn't that excited about reading this book but because you had like pushed it I was like oh okay I'll see do you see I'd like mesh two words there. I do that all the time when I get excited. I said because I pushed it because you pushed it to me <laughs> is what I was trying to say. Sorry if I do that weird like intermingling words together. But you are 100% right. I love this. This book came out in the 1930s. It's about a woman called Miss Pettigrew. Miss Pettigrew is very dowdy. She hasn't really lived a life. She's been um, kind of a maid to people and a governess and that's it. She's been of service to other people living in their home and raising their children but she's never had love herself. She's never had children herself but they are things that she has always wanted but she's always been of service to other people. She then has to go and work as a nanny for this woman so she thinks it's just going to be like you know here we go again working as a nanny of service to someone else oh well you know I'm later in life I'm very thankful for any job I can get so she turns up at this apartment and there's this woman called Miss LaFlossie and Miss LaFlossie is a nightclub singer and there's no children in sight and she ropes Miss Pettigrew into this weird kind of charade situation <laughs> where she's like oh, come in come in I need you to help me I've got a man in the bedroom but there's another man arriving oh can you help me and Miss Pettigrew is absolutely shocked by the situation she's like this is morally disgusting and Miss Flossie's got loads of like other men because she's very attractive she's very much like a Marilyn Monroe-esque glamorous figure and uh, Miss Pettigrew is like, is like this is a disgrace and obviously this book did come out in the 1930s as well but Miss Pettigrew at the same time is like this is a disgrace this is an abomination this is something that I've been never wanted to be involved in in my whole life but Oh my god, it's so exciting. I love it. <laughs> so she gets drawn into Miss LaFlossie's very complicated love life and then she spends the day with her. So that's what this is about. So it's not chapters, it's timestamps. So you'll have 1.15 a.m. to 2 30 a.m. and it just takes you through the whole day till the end of the day and what happens to Miss Pettigrew because Miss Flossie really takes her in as a friend and Miss Pettigrew's thinking like am I a nanny or what's going on I don't know but I'm really enjoying this whole thing and Miss Flossie's like come to the nightclub and come and meet my friends and you've helped me so much I need to repay you so come and do this with me and I just thought this was absolutely perfect. I really did. I really liked how everyone got along as well. All the women, like female characters, really got along. There wasn't one person that was like, ew, Miss Pettigrew, ugh, you're disgusting. And like a big monologue about this is why I hate you, blah, 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 blah. Whereas I'm told that the film is different. One of the characters in the book is kind of a villainess in the film so I have no interest to go near the film but this book is just so perfect how they all embrace her and one of the women like lends her some clothes and does her hair and they go to this nightclub and Miss Pettigrew has never lived a life so that's why it's called Miss Pettigrew lives for a day she's never th woke up and thought what do I want to do today that's never been in her mind she's always been of service to other people and finally for a day she's in this thrilling world and she's absolutely loving it I love to the end so much perfect book really like I don't say this about many books you know me I'll be like oh yeah I really liked it but perfect book like gonna reread this for years thought this was absolutely beautiful one of my new favorite books stunning book so much heart into it so much charm so funny like really laugh out loud funny absolutely adored it amazing <laughs> like I want to say more about it because I loved it so much 
it's just a great book I can highly recommend it so that's all I read in September I'm currently reading a book aloud on the channel I was reading Mo Madame Bovary but I have stopped reading Madame Bovary because I was butchering the French language <laughs> so I've decided to stop reading that book but I've made a playlist of those videos so you can go and watch it and I've made a new playlist for the book that I'll be reading aloud on the channel which I've already got a video up of me reading some of it and it is Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is not this big, do not worry, but Mary Poppins by P.R. Travis was a book series so this is the complete series but I'm only reading Mary Poppins book one. It is one of my favourite books, I have read it loads of different times so I thought it would be a good kind of book to get into. I'm trying to see what books are in here but I can, oh okay so in my edition if you're interested uh, it's got book one Mary Poppins, two Mary Poppins comes back, three Mary Poppins opens the door, four Mary Poppins in the park, five Mary Poppins in Cherry Tree Lane, six Mary Poppins and the house next door and those are all the Mary Poppins books if you're interested but I am going to be reading this aloud on the channel and it will be in a playlist on my channel. I have loads of playlists, I don't think I've ever said this but I put all my videos into playlists so if you go onto my channel you click playlist there'll be one for Friday reads, there's one for reading blogs, there's one for book hauls, there's one for book reviews, there's one for reading aloud this book, there's one for when I made um, Halloween last year, Halloween this year, all the videos are in different playlists so you can just, if you just like one type of video from me. Sometimes I'm a bit like that with YouTubers, like I don't like every, I wouldn't call myself a YouTuber, <laughs> like a YouTuber, it's like people that make videos. Sometimes I only like one kind of video from them, uh, so I might just like their reading blogs but I don't really, I'm not interested in their other videos, so I think it's nice to have just playlists where people can see exactly what they want to see. So I'm reading this aloud on the channel. So October's book club pick, I've done a full video and announcing it but if you didn't see that video then it is Rebecca by Daphne de Maria. I want us all to read this book together. I have done a full video talking about, it's called like um, October's book club something like that it's called and it's where I read some of chapter one so if you're not sure if you want to read this book or what kind of style of writing it is I would definitely check out the video because I do read some of chapter one and I give you some more information about what this book is about what I think it's about and a bit more of kind of I, th I thought it was a Jane Eyre retelling but maybe it's not even though it does seem to have similarities I went into all of that in that other video so definitely check out that video and that's it for all the books that I need to talk to you about. I just want to say I have an Etsy. I have an Etsy shop which is called Tay Time. Because I'm Hannah Day. Do I get Tay Time? Have a bit of Tay Time. Sit down. Have a bit of Tay Time. And I'm selling loads of different beautiful books. Sorry if the lighting's a little bit different. My camera just ran out of battery. So I just had to do my battery. And my mum just called. And I had like an hour long conversation with my mum. Because me and Dom really want to buy somewhere. Because we currently rent at the moment and my parents are helping us buy somewhere and there may be somewhere that we may be buying but I can't say anything probably won't be finalised till about February time but hopefully we're buying something that's very exciting but I can't like say anything yet I don't want to jinx it I don't know if we got it or not but what I was saying is that my Etsy shop has loads of stuff on it. I do loads of old books and stuff, but I also do Halloween bundles now. And if you click on each of them, you'll know what book you're getting. So some of them will say Winnie um, books, and they are a set of Winnie stories in one book and then loads of Halloween things and then other things like I've got the Coraline book with loads of Halloween things they're great for any kind of horror lovers, Halloween lovers because the Winnie books they're about this witch and her cat Winnie Wilbur and they're just so cute and lovely and if you love The Worst Witch then those books are perfect. I have one of the Winnie ones that is a joke book which it says in the description what you're getting so you can see all that. It's not a mystery bundle. I think sometimes when people go on it they might think oh is it a mystery Halloween bundle? It's not. If you click on it it will tell you what it is or in the description of some of them it tells you what it is. I've got a point horror one. I sold um, a great like murder mystery one the other day as well. Very much my Etsy is though books that I like. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look on it you'll be like oh Hannah like talks about these books on her channel she's obviously selling books that she really likes but in editions that I wish I could have read in them because I love the editions that I've got on there so like Great Expectations one of my favourite books that's up there A Passage to India 
that's up there a room with a view that's sold but that was up on there Bramley Hedge Beatrix Potter it's all about Animal Farm it's all books that I have read and really loved for the majority of them not all of them I've read but the majority of them I have because they're the ones that I'm drawn to when I'm looking for stuff to put on my Etsy so really check out my Etsy because I have a lot of great stuff there I also have resin bookmarks I just sold I had like a, a large one uh, which I just sold but I do have a smaller one as well that is still available that is beautiful that I made from English flowers that I collected and I dried and then I put them in the resin it was a long process and I love those bookmarks I also have knitted bookmarks up there as well if you'd like a little wintry bookmark loads of different stuff up on my Etsy so definitely go and check out my Etsy if you haven't already I'm going to end this video here. Tell me what you read in September and please let me know if you are going to read Rebecca or not. Also, one more question. Do you like short videos from me or long videos? I never know because I just get on here and I just chat away and then I think, oh, do people want a 10 minute video, Hannah? Like my, my videos are normally about eight or nine minutes long on average. Is that what people want or would they rather like a three minute video? So I would have broken all this stuff down into like probably about seven different videos <laughs> instead of just sitting down and doing one long chatty video. Would you prefer seven like three minute little ones like that? Is that easier to digest from me or do you like longer videos? Let me know and I'll see you tomorrow for another Halloween video.